Yes. No. Yes. No. Yeah, there is no way. It ha You have to have heard of Harry Potter. Never heard of him. Uh, he's one of the most famous Aurors ever. Never heard of him. You you lived in Ireland for a while with with. You've been to London. He's from there. Mad Eye Mundy. I've heard of him. He's a little bit before my time, but I like him. No, Legend. no, that's it. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to educate you. I just wait here. I'll be right back. So how long are you going to keep this up? For a little while longer. <laughs> yeah. You have a picture in your room of him signed from the Aura Convention a few years back. You've personally worked with him. Yeah, well, should know that. Okay, well, I'm staying out of this. I don't want the vengeance, okay? I've bought enough Nutella this year. Okay, that's it. Wait. All right. I have the entire collection. All right, so we're going to, I think, begin at the beginning in the first box set. I like documentaries. All right. Hello, my witches and wizards. This is Professor Rowan. I'm coming to you today to talk about the brilliant event for October, Darkness Rising. Week one starts on October 6th. That's right, this Tuesday, and it runs from the 6th through the 13th, starting at 11 a.m. my local time. Being that it's a dark arts event, it focuses on a dark part of wizarding history. Like we don't need to be reminded more about the darkness right now. But that's what you should expect, I guess, when October comes around. All energy on the map will be giving you five spell energy, which should be helpful since I'm running low after this weekend. There will also be a free store pack with 25 spell energy, enough ingredients to brew your own tonic for trace detection, and ingredients to brew a health potion. As usual, there are event only 1.5k port keys, and you are going to need to pick some up this time, even if you do get to the bonus challenge, but we'll be talking about that in a moment. The foundables in the wild are going to be two that we haven't seen before, the poacher and the snatcher. Both of them will require 20 to place their image. From the port keys, we will be getting the sign for Molepepper's apothecary shop. From the rune stones from the fortresses, you will be getting a poisoned candle, and one will be available from tasks, a black spider, a giant black spider. These tasks are gonna require some discussion, so let's just jump right into them. Um, but before I do, I do wanna mention that it doesn't appear that any foundables are going to be boosted for this event. It's just the regular brilliant style boosts. Quest one is pretty straightforward. It's very similar to quest ones we've had in the past. You need to pick two things up off of the map. Any two, doesn't matter what. That will get you two erumpet horns. You also need to brew two tonic for trace detections. They gave you the ingredients for one, hopefully you have enough ingredients sitting around to brew the second. That will get you one powdered dragon claw. I'm going to remind you one last time that it counts for brewing your tonic for trace detections when you pull them out of your cauldron, so you can start those bad boys the night before. Finally, you need to return ten of the brilliant poachers. That will get you two low-level invigoration drops. Completing quest one will get you 550 wizarding XP, 50 brilliant family XP, two restricted section books, and spell energy. Quest two, right up at the beginning. Quest two, already has me grinding my teeth. <sighs> quest two requires you to use a Barufio's brain elixir. Two of them two separate brain elixirs. That means it's going to take you a minimum of a half hour plus the little extra to start the second potion. Or 40 minutes if your brain elixir is now extended in time, like mine is. Using those two brain elixirs will get you one dark detector. 
If you don't have brain elixirs in your cauldron right now, they're not really giving you the things you need to brew them. Specifically, the thing that's hardest for me to get is the toadstools. So when you see this video, it might be a good idea to find your nearest greenhouse and plant some toadstool spores. Just understanding that you're gonna have to come back 24 hours later to pick up your supply. You also need to earn 7,500 wizarding XP from traces. It says from traces, so I'm assuming that using the, that in a fortress isn't going to count. However, using the brain elixirs is going to count, so that bonus will help towards that. That will get you one silver key. Finally, the part that has me screaming in terror, earn 350 brilliant family XP. That will give you four snowdrop, but it's not going to be easy. According to the math that we did with the last Brilliant event, you were only getting three or four per foundable. Um, it, the Brain Elixir doesn't increase the family XP. So I, I honestly don't know what to tell you. It's only task two. It's not like you're going to have anything to place at this point. So collect as much as you can, and please don't place the images. Because remember, if you hold off on placing that image, you get that extra one per catch of foundable. Also, you're needing to place images for the bonus task, so holding off on it is probably a good idea in that situation. Honestly, I'm expecting task two to take me more than a day. So try to plan accordingly. Completing quest 2 gets you 750 wizarding XP, 75 brilliant family XP, 3 restricted section books, and 10 spell energy. Quest 3 of 4 feels a little bit like it's thumbing its nose at me, because the, well, one of them, the reward, is 2 leaping toadstools, which you might have needed for those brain elixirs just a moment ago. That is return 15 of the snatchers which I am assuming you had to do in order to get the XP from the previous quest again. You also need to brew seven potions, seven of them. I'm not gonna use a golden cauldron for this. I'm just going to make sure that my cauldron is all filled up with the four when I get to that point so I can collect those quickly and then brew three quick things. I've been brewing a lot of standard Estimula potions lately, so probably those. That will reward you with four ginger root. And now you need to use five potions in wizarding challenges, which you just brewed seven, so using five shouldn't be, hopefully, that much of an issue. That will get you one hermit crab shell. Completing quest three gives you 1,250 wizarding XP, 75 brilliant family XP, five restricted section books, and 10 more spell energy. And finally, quest four, which takes place entirely in fortresses. You will need to complete five wizarding challenges with three or more teammates. That will get you one spell book. Probably gonna be hanging out on the night bus for that one. You need to win 15 wizarding challenges. So out of those five, we'll go towards your 15 and you're gonna need 10 more. Probably do those with three or more people. So you get the XP bonuses at least. That will get you another spell book. You also have to earn 7,500 wizarding XP from the challenges. It won't work from traces. It has to be from the fortress. That will get you two spell books, but will probably require you to use yet another brain elixir. And make sure you're doing it with as many people as possible because you get XP bonuses for the more people you have with you in the fortress. All I'm saying is, a lot of time on the night bus, getting as many people together as you possibly can, and using brain elixirs. For completing quest four, you will receive 50 gold, five books each of the restricted books and the dark arts books, the giant disturbing spider, and more spell energy. And now, the bonus challenge. All right, so listen, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this bonus challenge. I'm gonna be flat out honest with you. I didn't get to the bonus challenge last time because of the excessive amount of family XP that you had to collect. This isn't looking much better. Cause for me, the main reason I focus on doing the bonus challenge is for the fact that I won't have to walk port keys. Walking port keys is hard for me to do right now since, you know, 
during the last event, I couldn't even leave the house. There was ash falling from the sky. There isn't ash falling from the sky now, but I don't exactly go for long walks in my current environment. However, one of the bonus tasks is to open or unlock, I'm not sure which one they mean, I'm assuming it's unlock, five port keys. So if I have to unlock five port keys, then why don't I just do the regular port keys earlier, like in quest two, so that I get the brilliant XP from walking those port keys in quest two and hopefully make that part go by a little bit faster. I don't know, it all just seems a little counterintuitive to me. But getting or opening those five port keys will give you one silver key. You also have to place five images on the brilliant page. So all five images you've collected. I'm assuming by this point, considering how much XP you had to collect earlier, that you have a complete 20 of both the Snatchers and the Poachers. I'm assuming that you already have been using your brilliant runestones to get the three of the fortress only one that you're going to need. You gotta open port keys anyway, so you might as well place the port key image to boot and you're gonna get the spider from part four. So you should, in theory, have all five to place at this time. That will get you one spell book. You have to win in your highest unlocked chamber. So dark five, here we come. That will give you the potion that helps with elites. The name of it's escaping me right now. But you also have to use 10 Estimulo potions in wizarding challenges. Any one of the three Estimulo potions, but 10 potions in wizarding challenges, which knowing me is gonna happen an awful lot in five. That will get you 10 spell energy. Finally, the last one that has me grinding my teeth. Earn 12, thousand five hundred wizarding xp that's one two comma five zero zero xp standard xp not you know special xp yeah that's gonna be fun might i hope and pray that you've been putting some of your sos training into the chests that you receive from going up a level in the family xp areas my life mate currently gets, I think, 700 XP whenever he goes up a level in a family, any family. And I think I get like 500 and I'm hoping and praying that will count towards that XP because that's the only way I see that this is going to work. Also, brain elixirs. You're gonna be chugging those things like they're water. Collecting all of that XP will get you one singular spellbook. Completing the bonus challenge will get you 2,000 wizarding XP, which compared to all of the other XP you just had to collect is a candle in the wind. 100 brilliant family XP, um, five more of the apothecary signs, five defense against the dark arts books, a title for your ministry ID, and 20 spell energy. Let's get brutally honest for a moment here, shall we? This is gonna be hard, not expecting this one to be easy at all. The math just isn't lining up for it to be an easy event. It probably shouldn't be. Dark arts is not something you want people dabbling in for fun. That said, even though I do this, you know, from home, I'm questioning if it's even doable because I do it from home. I don't leave my house right now. Um, so the only way I'm seeing this to be doable is to dedicate an evening every evening and go driving around late at night in an attempt to get distance on my port keys, find enough energy to be able to do all of the tasks that I need to do, um, find enough, well, foundables to get the XP that I'm going to need to collect both Brilliant XP and Standard Wizarding XP. This one is going to be a challenge. It's going to test how dedicated we are to fighting this calamity. And unfortunately, since the lore of what is going on with the calamity is not attached to the mysteries, but is attached to completing these brilliant events, if I want to find out, or if you want to find out, what's going on with the calamity, we have to finish this. So, I guess it's time to roll up our sleeves, strap on some boots, and get her done. I try to be positive when dealing with these, because 
Yes, it's a surge and a calamity, and the calamity is a horrible thing that's affecting us all. But I try to keep a positive tone. I don't know how to do that with this one. So, I'm just trying to be honest. If you have any tips or tricks on how to get through this particular experience, please put them in the comments below. Also, if these video heads up are helpful to you, like, subscribe, share, it really does help us out. We are so close to our goal of 300 subscribers. At the moment I am making this video, it is currently 293 subscribers. Once we reach 300, I will explain how the drawing works. We've done one of these before. Once we hit those 300 subscribers, I'm going to put in my video that you need to comment on the video. If you are a subscriber and comment on the video that, you know, that's how I know that you want one of the wands. I don't want to give a wand out to someone who doesn't want one, if that makes sense. But be a subscriber, comment on the video, and that is how I will know to put your name in the hat for the drawing. I am hoping to be having that done by community day. That would be great. Also, thank you so much to my patrons. You guys make all of this craziness possible. And final last plug, when I am going to be in the night bus and you can potentially join up with me, I will put that on my Twitter and my Instagram. We also now have a Facebook page if you would like to get a hold of us that way as well. Thank you so much for being here with me and for putting up with that particular ramble. So please stay safe. And that means to keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your wands ready. So, what do you think? It's good. The ministry department doesn't look a thing like that, and there's usually a brain tank over on the left side, but not bad. Wait, wait, what? It's a good movie.